Welcome back to another episode of Football Telegators, where we talk everything about the NFL, including your picks for bets and fantasy. In today's episode, as usual, I have here with me Yams, the Jets fan, Andy, the unbiased football fan, and myself, Aaron, the Cowboys fan, uh, where we have a couple topics we're going to go over today. And lastly, we're, we're going to talk about Andy's fantasy mock draft 1 through 10. Uh, we're going to have a, of a little bit of an intermission throughout the 1 through 5 and then give our thoughts on it. So if we, if we disagree or agree with him. Uh, and then a six through 10. So it's going to be very interesting because recently we have our talks with the fantasy and sometimes we can very like go off on our own path, I guess. But first, you know, we're going to mention here, Lamar Jackson, he said he's not going to negotiate his contract in season. And we're also going to talk about Kenny Pickett making his start. You know, uh, he was the third quarterback to go in in that preseason game. First, it was Mitchell Trubisky. And then it was uh, Mason Rudolph, if I'm not mistaken. And then it was Kenny Pickett at the very end. We're going to talk about that as well. But first off, with Lamar Jackson not negotiating his contract in season, is this going to be a risky move by Lamar Jackson? What do you guys think? Well, it worked out for Dak Prescott, right? I mean, he went down with an injury, which showed the (laughs) Cowboys how much they needed him. Yeah. I don't know. I I, I mean, obviously, the the Ravens are a lot better with Lamar Jackson than without with Lamar um, without him but there is a lot of quarterbacks coming in so it could it could hurt him if he does end up playing what people have been saying about him they Mm -hmm. they feel that he is sort of overrated if you if you will especially with all the you know the the past rumors that happened with Hollywood Brown was it where he complained or someone complained Mm -hmm. that the lack of lack of receptions to him because he's a he is a running quarterback yeah, it was it was him, Hollywood Brown. He well, was complaining because no, it it wasn't him um, that he complained. He left, and I I forgot which wide receiver or somebody from the an, an ex Baltimore Raven said that peop, uh, wide receivers are not going to go to the Baltimore Ravens because he is a running quarterback and he just does like short passes. That's why um, Andrews, the tight end, is like the the leader of receptions for the for the Ravens so that is why this person said well people are just not going to go I mean wide receivers are not going to go to the Baltimore Ravens and they're or they're going to be leading so but he assumed that that's that was his reasoning of why he left right 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 even though Hollywood Brown said no that that's not true but I mean that you can yeah he said it's not true oh okay 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 so he left for another reason, not for uh, Lamar Jackson. Well, I think either way, um, it's I don't. I mean, yeah. The, if if you look at what happened with Dak Prescott, uh, you know, he went down with that injury, and it showed that they really needed him. But in this case, you know, they did lose Hollywood Brown, and I think their best receiver can technically be Rashad Bateman, but that's you know debatable because they, they have a lot of competition. I guess there's no clear number one on that team except for Mark Andrews, and he's a tight end. And besides that, they're just all about the running, all about that run option. But the difference um, between the Dak Prescott situation and Lamar Jackson is that Lamar Jackson actually has a good backup. Last year, Tyler Huntley went in for him, and he showed up pretty well. So the reason why Dak Prescott got injured, and I mean, the backups were like Cooper Rush, and then they were going through uh, Danucci and I believe Gary Gilbert, oh, and it was Dalton. just yeah, it was just so many, and and you knew that you needed Dak Prescott over here in Baltimore. It could be that Lamar yeah, Jackson's a, a little bit dispensable. Yeah, so it would it would hurt his value. So yeah, I mean, putting it that way, I think he he is risking it, but I mean, he's pushing his luck here to see what he can get, and I don't think he's gonna be like he's not gonna have like a a a year that's going to be bad, but he's risking if he gets injured that, you know, those backups are going to show up and, and decrease his value. Uh, Maybe they do play well, Tyler Huntley, if, if he comes down to that injury. But besides that, I mean, that's the only way I think he would risk it if he gets injured. Otherwise I don't see him underperforming really, but um, it's going to be hard to top the, what he's done in the past for sure. The risk here with Lamar Jackson is it's basically it's, it's known that he can't run an offense or a pro offense. I don't know how you want to call it, but a more pass-heavy offense. Since Lamar Jackson does use his legs a lot to win games, 
So, and if it, if it comes down to that, if it comes down to the Ravens needing him, need him to throw the ball in order to win the game, that's what it's going to hurt Lamar Jackson is the fact is maybe he doesn't pass more. I don't know about Tyler Huntley being better or decent. It could just be that there is a really good head coach in Baltimore that makes these quarterbacks look good. I don't know about Tyler Huntley. He he probably has the same type of style the, of playing. It's the coaching staff. I mean, if they're the ones that put in the plays, and luckily Lamar Jackson does have the skills to run those types of offense. Run. But it, yeah, to run. What about that famous clip um, where um, the trust was put into Lamar Jackson in that? I'm trying to remember what game it was. Do you guys remember? There was this one famous clip that was in season um where he was making a a game decision and and where they put the coaching staff put his trust in um uh what's his name uh Jackson Harbaugh was putting yeah. his trust in Jackson. No, that's Wouldn't not. Wouldn't you how say it that was. that could be a hint? No, Are you sure? Lamar Jackson said, "You're the boss to Jim Harbaugh." It was his call. Maybe it's two different types mm-hmm. of clips. <laughs> <laughs> I, I could have sworn because this is something that was helping Lamar Jackson's case and they were praising him. That's from my memory. I don't remember exactly when it was. It, it, it's very blurry for me. But I do remember that he had that popular clip with it, where it was him, where Harbo was putting his trust to Lamar Jackson, that he's showing that he can be capable of being a good leader and taking control of this offense to some degree. Obviously, Harbaugh is a really good coach, co- uh, coach already, so you don't really have to do much as a quarterback because – He's a great coach, and he he's he's shown it in the past. But it shows in that clip that he's. I mean, you guys can like Google it or something like that. But I'm like guaranteed that that was the scenario of what it was. It was an important drive, and I think it was like a, a scoring drive or something like that. And Harbaugh put his trust with Jackson in running. I remember that what you're talking about. Time. It's a little foggy for me too. Yeah, I want to say it was Lamar Jackson running it in. So he did do it, basically. Yeah. He did win the game. Yeah, he yeah. did win the game. He put the trust in, in Lamar Jackson, and they, they did win the game. Yeah. Well, one more thing that I want to say that is kind of in the negative side, in my opinion, towards Lamar Jackson, is that he doesn't have a, an agent, a sports agent. He's representing himself. So there's mm-hmm. even reports that he actually wants uh, more money than Deshaun Watson from the Cleveland. I, I don't blame him for asking that. That's perfectly fine. But... Uh, once he's representing himself, I mean, he's a young guy still. And when you're representing yourselves, there comes emotions when you're negotiating with the organization, with the general manager. And it might have, and it might take a toll into his gameplay, like not focusing. If he's really, I mean, kudos to him if he's strong minded enough to not let it bother him and just continue to play this whole season, as he said that he's not going to be negotiating. So if he doesn't get a contract, before the season uh, kudos to him if he can actually focus without thinking about why well, i'm not getting a contract and waiting until next off season and hopefully he didn't get injured like last year it shows that he cares though it shows that he has heart and he he has passion for this game and he wants to be a franchise quarterback and he feels like he deserves that not every quarterback has that kind of heart right it, it really depends and if if the team if the Ravens feel like that's worth it, then they're gonna risk it all for that. Obviously, it, it sucks that you know the markets are set the way it is. But if we're just going by how it is, I I think the Ravens are are willing to go for it here at the end of the season if he does produce well enough. I don't know if if there's some sort of like internal expectations that the front office or the coaching staff have for Lamar Jackson to be able to produce and and take this team. Uh, further than they've gone through in the in the past um that's just something that we're gonna have to see at the very end of the season to see if they make it to the playoffs or not but it's gonna be very interesting because I, it's it's a team that might have a focus more on the defensive side and have uh when it is offensive it's more of like a Lamar Jackson's show that he needs to run and it's gonna be on him and he's gonna be the focus of that offense, obviously. I mean, that is pretty interesting. Kind of been... That is pretty interesting that he mm-hmm. does he doesn't have an agent, and I think his mom is helping him in in this cases too. I think that's what I read too. So yeah, I mean, come on, let's just let's just say here it's this brings not only pressure but it makes 
negotiation much more complicated when there's not an agent involved here. So it's a lot of emotions. A lot of emotions. A lot of uh, very complicated. I can't. I can't imagine negotiating millions and millions and millions for myself. And there's and a with lot my of... mom. Come on. No, and and not only that. <laughs> It's not like you're negotiating something simple like, okay, here's your guaranteed money yeah. for the whole year for so many years. I mean, there's injury clauses. There's like if um, your situations about tra- being traded. There's uh, there's the gar- how much the guaranteed money that you're going to be playing through each year. So there's a lot of things that that's why agents are agents and it's like getting a real estate agent sometimes people think like they can do it with themselves but there's some situations Mm -hmm. that you need a real estate agent because they know the ins and outs just get a professional one of course right not all real estate agents are the same but you tend you tend to get a really good one to help to protect you and that's what they're there for to protect you yeah we're gonna see here if it backfires on him uh being his own agent to see if he's capable of doing it maybe he is maybe he isn't but it's just something that we kind of have to wait and see and right now this is one of those moves that we're gonna have to see play out throughout the season but we don't know if it's gonna bite him in the butt um another afc quarterback that we will be talking about today is kenny pickett he has a spotlight spotlight on him he's one of the uh few quarterbacks that were standing out in this past draft uh, for the Pittsburgh Steelers, I drafted him. He played his first, you know, preseason game, his first, I guess, NFL game, not the official in the season, but preseason. Uh, and he was the third string quarterback in that case. It, Trubisky started, and then it was Mason Rudolph, and then it was Pickett. I think Pickett showed uh, pretty good flashes. I think he's a good quarterback. Um, but we'll be asking here, is he, is he good enough to start for the Steelers right now? What do you guys think? That's a tough situation because it goes into like your opinion of how you should manage a rookie quarterback. So in my opinion, you should start with Trubisky. Trubisky played well as and in, in the preseason game as well, and he has some veteran um, to him. He knows some football situations that he can he can actually win you some games um, more than Kenny Pickett being a rookie. And he can just sit down for one year and see what's going on um, in the in the games and in the scenarios and listen to what the quarterbacks are saying. So there there are situations in which you want a the rookie to start. Like for example, Trevor Lawrence, he's a special type of talent, so you just start him right away, especially because you don't have any quarterbacks. Um, so in this type of situation, since you do have a veteran quarterback in Trubisky, I would start Trubisky. Now the thing here is. We've seen this happen before with the Bears and with um, the 49ers where they're kind of flip-flopping on the quarterbacks. It's kind of dangerous here, and I feel like one of the things is this team, this front office, this coaching staff has to be committed. They have to have some kind of deciding factor of who should start the whole season, and they should only really switch quarterbacks when it's a really, really crazy scenario where i don't know the quarterback obviously is doing horrible wherever it is trubitsky whatever um they also have to think about you know mason rudolph he, he's oh, he's on. been shown and <laughs> and I'm, I'm just saying he's he's had starts before and the team like every team is different obviously some people would think i don't know just it's better to just keep them benched and and not risk them right now and and just kind of leave him in the bench to learn to grow and not throw him in there yet. It's like, for example, when Romo went down and Dak Prescott had to go in, it's only after an injury where these rookies really step up and, and some are capable of taking that spotlight. Same thing was shown with Patrick Mahomes, right? When Alex Smith went down, didn't he go in? Wasn't it Patrick Mahomes who stepped up and it was yes. really showing off right there? Yes. It, it's those kind of things where... It, it has to be the perfect moment. Now, a, ba- a good example of where it's bad to do something like this is the Bears, where they keep flip-flopping with Andy Dalton and Justin Fields. Stick with one guy, dude. Like, it doesn't have to be this hard. Stick with one guy that you feel confident in. It has to be an agreement on everybody that, or at least a majority where, okay, this guy has to start. Andy Dalton has to start. I feel like Justin Fields still needs some work. 
we can't just throw him in there. He doesn't seem ready yet. So on. Same thing with Trey Lance and Jimmy well, that's Garoppolo. What I, just keep one guy. Yeah, that's why I'm telling you that it really depends on the situation of the team. Like you were mentioning, like for example, uh, the, uh, the Kansas City Chiefs with Alex um, Smith. So he was the starting quarterback, and he was pretty pretty good, a really decent quarterback. Yep. Also with the Cowboys with Tony Romo, um, he was also yep. a really good quarterback. Decent. So there was like no question for who's the starter. But if you go with the Brown with the Browns with the Bears, then you have Andy Dalton, which we all know he was a big question mark, and and Justin Fields. Plus the, yep. the Bears, it's just a, a dysfunction of an, an organization. That's why they <laughs> haven't been winning. But yeah, go, a really yeah. good one that you brought in and that you brought up was the 49ers. Even though you can do like a census uh, around um, asking people, and they all would say most. I would assume that mostly the majority would say that um, that Jimmy Garoppolo is not like a franchise type of quarterback that's going to take you yeah. to win you to the Super Bowl, even though he won. So that's why they've been also kind of like in the fence. So, um, and compared to other teams that have it established, I have a much respect for the P- Pittsburgh Steelers because they've done things very well for the last decades and whatever decision that they're going to be doing, I'm going to just trust what, trust what they do because they have been a yep. successful organization. I agree. And I think they're going to be assertive with their decision here. They're not going to flip-flop like the Bears or the 49ers. I just think it would be a mistake of getting Trubisky if you're going to get Pickett. Like, what's the point of getting Trubisky then? Well, okay. Yeah, no, I agree. I like the tradi- old tra- tradition of starting your rookie quarterback. I don't think that's an old tradition. That's actually a <laughs> new <laughs> tradition. No, back in the 90s. Sorry. Let me let me, let me me finish. Okay. I like the old tra- <laughs> The traditional way of starting your quarterback a year later. Yeah. You didn't let me finish. Mm-hmm. A well, year later and of you, watching. Sometimes it's not even a year. Back in the day, they took like two, maybe the three two? years. I yeah. think that's well. You got to let her finish. Yeah. Well, then you also have to think <laughs> about the rookie contract at that point. You know. Anyways. Yeah. I do like the fact that they get to sit behind someone. But it depends who they're sitting behind. Like you guys just mentioned some pretty good examples. Well, I, he, he didn't get to sit that long behind Romo, but that would have been a situation is to sit behind Romo to learn if he hadn't gone down with his injury. Then uh, Dak Prescott would have stepped in. And you mentioned one um Aaron with Patrick Mahomes. He was behind Alex Smith. Aaron Rodgers was behind Brett Favre. Brett Favre. Um so on and so forth. So but now I understand why they have to start their rookie quarterbacks. You just want to know if they're good, if they can handle it. These quarterbacks are nowadays are you throw them in and they shine. You know, they're one for example is Justin Herbert. They're just good. You know right away you you are a star. Again, it depends on the situation. It depends on the situation. Because now, you have a you also draft because your quarterback is either getting close to the end of his career and you want somebody that has learned for a bit, kinda like the Aaron Rodgers with Brett Favre. But look at the. But it can also What's, backfire on you. Look at Jordan Love with with Aaron Rodgers. Now come on, that's dumb. We all know that's a dumb move. No, but it's an it's another example. So yeah, it but really you don't depends. draft a quarterback in your second round when your when your wide receiver needs help. I mean, was it in the receiver. first round? Was it for the first one exactly? No, that's messed up. Yeah, it was big time messed up. The the floor don't know how to do things over there. Was it Lafleur when they? Yeah, they they did. He was a head coach. Why but, don't you blame the GM though? True. Okay, but back to the Steelers. Uh, I don't think the plan was to draft Pickett. If it, if it fell to them, he was still sitting there. So if he was sitting there, I would I would draft him too. I think the plan was to go mm-hmm. ahead with Mitchell, Mitchell Trubisky as quarterback, but then this came in, Kenny Pickett fell to them, and so now they are going to have an open quarterback competition. If it's like blowing them out of William Trubisky out of the starting job, then I would go with Kenny Pickett. It's it's like a no brainer for me. Yeah, and we got to see how Mitchell Trubisky was with the Bears, and he was a decent quarterback. But overall, we don't know how they handled him. He seemed pretty bad in general when he was with that team. So it's gonna be interesting to see what he's like to uh, be under a really good coaching staff. And also, the Steelers have no rush in this. It's okay if. 
picket doesn't start right away. You gave Mitchell Trubisky $14 million for two years. The rookie contract, I think, lasts like four years. So you can have Kenny Pickett sit for a year, just like how Patrick Mahomes did it. I think it's five and years. Then it, Go ahead. It's five yeah, years? Yeah, I believe it's for five the years. Rookie? Yeah, but they start, like, if they're good, they start asking for their contract, like, by year number three after year Oh, three. it's a fifth-year option, right. but it's four years guaranteed, right? Right. So, yeah, fifth-year option. and So that's even, like, better. You don't have to rush anything, obviously, if if... Kind of like so. What Yams was saying, they it fell. Kenny Pickett fell to their hands. So great scenario. All right, let's not rush anything. We're not desperate. Let's just see how we can develop this kid to see if he's worth it, and then that's it. I think it'll be fine. And if they should start Mitchell Trubisky, unless he's absolutely horrible, but there's no rush, and I don't think it'll be that bad, honestly. And I think they they have something good with um Kenny Pickett. Yeah, yeah. It'll be interesting to see if they do have a franchise quarterback in Kenny Pickett, man, they are also very, lucky. very lucky from going from Ben Roethlisberger yes. yeah. to Kenny Pickett as a franchise quarterback, just like the Green Bay Packers with Brett Favre and two Aaron Rodgers. So it's... Yeah, too bad uh, not not Jordan Love, though. <laughs> yeah, no, Jordan Love, thing? unfortunately, right, Jordan he's Love. just going to have to wait or ask to be traded to get another, oh, another no. opportunity. They already know he's not good. He sucks. No, you can't know until they actually play. No, they know. I don't think don't so. Know. Don't you see like sometimes like within games that sometimes the third or the fourth quarterback just does better than the backup? I see that constantly sometimes and it's and it's until you throw them into that situation, not what they're showing you in practice. That's when they also show up. So I wouldn't like dismiss them right out, like right away. <laughs> okay, now what w- let's let's um Let's shine the spotlight on you, Andy, here and talk fantasy. Um, you want to show off your fantasy mock draft, your 1 through 10, but you want to do a 1 through 5, get our thoughts to see what we agree and disagree on, and then you'll talk through 6 to 10 uh, picks for this fantasy mock draft. So you're going to go over your favorites for 1 through 5, and we'll give our thoughts. So I guess, yeah, I'll, I'll move it on over to you. Okay, perfect. Yeah. I'll start with my one through five. You guys give your opinions on it. You guys can tell me if I'm crazy or whatever. And then uh, I'll name the the six through ten and get your opinions as well. Okay, so here we go. For pick number one, I have Jonathan Taylor. Every and everybody's mock draft, he should be number one. He got he scored so many points as a running back last year, and he can catch and he can run. He can do a lot of things, so he should be the number one overall pick. Number two, I have Christian McCaffrey. Even though he has been injured in the last few years, he still could be the number one running back in this NFL um, year because he can do mostly more than everybody in the sense of of catching the ball, more elusive than any other other running backs. Um, He also can run it. He is just a monster. He is like the total package when he's healthy. Number three, I have Austin Eckler. He's just his... His productivity has just gone up each year, and he hasn't gone down in any negative side. Um, He just continues to make the offense for the Chargers better, and with Herbert as their quarterback, it just has given him much more points. Number four, I have Derrick Henry. Derrick Derrick Henry has broken records of the most yards by a, a running back consecutively for the last two years. And um, he, the Titans offense, since um, since they lost their weapons and wide receivers, they're going to look into, uh, into Derrick Henry a lot more. So he's going to get a lot more touches and even maybe even pa- uh, catching the ball as well. And the number five, I have Dalvin Cook. Dalvin Cook is, is a really good running back with the Minnesota Vikings. And now with the new coach that he's an offensive minded, he's going to be using him more than than he has been used before. And that Vikings offense with Justin Jefferson as a wide receiver and Kirk Cousins as a good, decent uh, quarterback for fantasy, um, Dalvin Cook is just going to be gaining more momentum, again, if he stays healthy. Um, I'm curious on to why. <clears throat> Would you, if, if 100% guaranteed Alvin Kamara isn't in trouble at all, which that's what it seems like. Mm-hmm. You wouldn't put him in your top five? No, I wouldn't. Why? 
because we don't know what the situation is with the quarterbacks. Uh, I believe Winston has injured. I have no reports if he's actually better or what's going on. Um, so I really would like to know what is his situation at quarterback. Yeah, Michael Thomas is back, but I don't know how productive he's going to be. So it's still a question mark, that offense. Even though he's a really good running back, I would still pick, get him until the second round. Second round. Okay, so you you don't even think he's worth a late first round pick? No, I believe there is other players, which I will name later. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah, their quarterbacks aren't the best, but I mean, Jameis Winston isn't a bum. Same thing with Andy Dalton, which I think he's going to be the backup. Um, but I I think he's totally capable of of being a top five this year if nothing goes wrong with the whole situation he's in, which. Well, let me say we'll that, that if but... if you get Kamara in the second round, then he's a steal. It's, it's sort of a it's a sort of a steal. Like in the middle to late uh, late of yeah. the second round, it's he's a, a but big we steal. have to be we have to be monitoring his situation. Yeah, because right now it's kind of a gamble because it's not a guaranteed if he's out uh, if he's safe or not. So for now, I guess I agree with you, but I think he's capable of being a top five. I mean, he he's shown it when he was at his peak. Um, yeah. He, huge downgrade in the QB with Drew Brees being gone, but uh, the court, the quarterbacks right now that they have here aren't the worst, and I think they're still a pretty decent team overall. I mean, they have a good defense still, So and Michael Thomas is back, so that's going to be... It, I think it's something to watch, too, and it's a big gamble, too. So that's the only thing. I, besides that, I, I think your list is pretty good. Uh, I, I have my doubts about Derrick Henry, but that's it. <laughs> I have my doubts at number five. You have Dalvin Cook. I would have put maybe either Justin Jefferson or Cooper Cup before Dalvin Cook. I just see more upside with maybe Jefferson over Dalvin Cook. Not that he's not a bad quarterback. I just see that there's more points with Jefferson. I mean, running back. Yeah. (laughs) No, no, that's a good point. Um, And if you guys want, I'll start with my list of uh, six through ten. It's going to be Cooper Cup six. (laughs) Yep. All right, so I guarantee it. <laughs> or Jefferson. So, okay, so <laughs> all right. So, starting with number 6, I have Justin Jefferson as <laughs> the 6 overall. Um he for me, he's going to be the number 1 wide receiver. A lot of people can think it's Cooper Cup, but I think it's Justin Jefferson and it's just because of the offensive head um offensive minded coach that the Vikings got. They're going to be using a lot of Kirk Cousins' uh, arm in this year and that offense for the vikings is just going to be very explosive and he since he already showed not with an offensive minded coach he's just gonna his ceilings is just gonna grow number seven i have cooper cup cooper cup was the number one wide receiver and he was just a monster in fantasy points whoever had justin Je- i mean cooper cup maybe won their fantasy last year but they actually got um alan robinson so there the ball is going to be actually distributed it um, around the offense and so that's going to give Cooper Cup's numbers um, to be lowered not to say that he's that he's not going to be very very good because I still believe that he's going to be really good that's why I have him in number seven but I would pick number seven as Cooper Cup number eight I have Najee Harris Najee Harris is the running back for the Pittsburgh Steelers and he was just a workhorse uh, last year with the Pittsburgh Steelers almost playing every single down and it's just going to be continuing and now with Trubisky or Kenny Pickett, um, he's just going to get a lot more uh, touches. They pass the ball to him, and he's a uh, and he also gets a lot of um, in in the goal line touches as well. So his he is a really good running back for the number eight spot. Number nine, I have Jamar Chase, um, a star wide receiver with the Cincinnati Bengals. I will continue to believe that Joe Burrow and Jamar Chase still have that connection, so he is going to get a lot of touches as a wide receiver, so I believe he's going to be the third uh, wide receiver, best wide receiver uh, this year. And number 10, I have Stefan Diggs. Year after year, Stefan Diggs has proved that he is a uh, a top 10 worthy player for fantasy, and so you'd just be dumb not to get him in, in the top 10. Um, so Stefan Diggs is still gonna is still playing with the Buffalo Bills with Allen um, with Josh Allen, and that team is actually predicted to go to the Super Bowl. So he is gonna get a lot of touches. What do you guys think? Nah, um, what was your number seven again? Cooper Cup, and then eight. 
Najee Harris. Oh, okay. I think that you have Cooper Cup and Jefferson a little too low. I think you should not put them finan- in my top not, five. Not financial advice. No, I think they're just interchangeable. Yeah, I think they're in the right spot, well, but no. I think they're more so interchangeable rather than being in the top uh, five. I think one should be at least top five, and I think you should rethink Derrick Henry and Dalvin Cook. You I- know, it's it it's because with with the wide receivers, and here's the situation with wide receivers and running backs. So when you're playing fantasy, usually the running backs get more touches than the wide receivers. Uh, They're the lead running back, so they get the ball constantly through each series. And sometimes these wide receivers, they don't get the ball within these series. So you get more of a percentage chance with a good running back that you're going to be collecting points. So it's about about risk-taking. So that's why I put these guys higher than these wide receivers. But, I mean, of course, Justin Jefferson and Cooper Cup can be better than Derrick Henry and Dalvin Cook, maybe even Eckler. But I'm just saying that it's for, for risk purposes, I would get the running backs first. No, maybe even Eckler. Is that what you just said? No, leave him where he's... You have him at number three? Yes. Yeah, no, leave him. No, I'm Don't just saying... Don't even say that. No, maybe even Eckler. No, it's not even Well, Cooper Cup got more points than Eckler last year. But Eckler mm-hmm. was number two best running back in the league behind Jonathan Taylor. I got you. But if we're going just by points of last year, then it should be Jonathan Taylor and then Cooper Cup or vice versa. Yeah. No, yeah, I agree. So I'm surprised you put that many wide receivers in the top 10. No, because these guys are, are, are were, mm-hmm. just, yeah, they just couldn't, they just generated a whole bunch of points uh, last year, especially in PPR yeah. leagues. So, Justin Jefferson, Cooper Cup, uh, Jamar Chase, and Stefan Diggs are always going to produce for you. Each game, they're, pro- they're going to have at least one touchdown. Maybe not all of them, but mostly, they're, you're going to get at least one touchdown. And these guys are also, are also deep threats, too. So besides the point that you're going to get of them catching it, it's all of those yards that they get when they, when they catch the ball. So that's why they get sometimes more points than the running backs, is the running backs... Their average gains is like three, four yards per carry. And with wide receivers and of this caliber wide receivers, then you get a lot more yards. So is is this Justin Jefferson's second year in the NFL? Was he a rookie last year? Was that his second no, it's year? No, his third it's year. His third it was year. second year last year. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I would maybe maybe switch out Cook for Cup, but that's pretty much it uh, for the most part. I think. Um, Cup and Jefferson are interchangeable. And then the other ones, I mean, yeah, it, it kind of makes sense. Uh, if Christian McCaffrey stays healthy, which is the last year that if he does go down again with some kind of injury and he misses multiple games, I am I think I'm done with him being a first rounder um, for now because he's this, that would make it three years. I don't think he'll get injured, but if he does, my trust will go down a lot with him. And that would suck because he, he's such a great running back. And to have that kind of issue of just constantly being injured, which I think, what, what was it? The first season, it wasn't even that bad of an injury, right? No, I believe the first um, season. That one was bad. The first se- Oh, his very first season? The first season he got injured. Well, it's because in the first season that he got drafted, he did get injured. And it was like very minor. But then the second year, I think it was something with his knee. One. It was a big time injury. And then last year, it was just he wasn't fully healthy with his knee and he got another injury. So it just piled mm. on. Yeah. I'm with you. He, they need to take care of this. It's guy. a really big risk getting Christian McCaffrey, because if you're getting him in the second overall pick, I've said it before, you're not going to be picking until the end of the second round. So all the good quality star players are gone. Yep. So it is very yep. nerve wracking, but it's really hard to not pick him up because he's just the workhorse. If we know that he doesn't get uh, that he doesn't get injured, then he would be number one, no questions asked. Mm-hmm. You know who's yep. looking pretty good right that. now? He's a rookie. His name is Traylon Burks for Tennessee Titans. Yeah, he's looking pretty good. If they uh figure it out, whatever is going on with <laughs> you guys had the doubts with him. What? I'm sorry. You guys had the doubts with him because uh, when he got drafted, a lot of people were like so confused. Obviously, like I would take AJ Brown any day, but I think he's going to be pretty good. Well, I mean, they're going to have to pass the ball to somebody. So somebody, yeah. a wide receiver, there should the be job. getting points. Him. 
He'll do the job. If Tannehill yeah, and or Malik, whoever ends up. And it's going to help Derrick Henry a lot, and that will just bring up his ADP up a lot a lot more. So yeah, for sure. I, I'd feel more confident in drafting Derrick Henry in the top five if Traylon Burks can fill in the shoes that was left by A.J. Brown, for sure. He looked pretty good. He looked pretty good. Another Another concern is Christian McCaffrey. When he was playing in 2019, I think that's when his monster year, when he took off, right? In right. fantasy. Right. How is the O line compared to now? The O line for the Panthers is eh. Well, they're not awful, but they did. They're not draft... awful, but they're not great. They did draft an O lineman in the first round, if I'm not mistaken. So well, they... from what I saw in preseason, it was both Baker and Darnold were, were kind of being sacked. So I don't know if it was the starting O line that's going to be for the season, but it doesn't seem great that I can see that Christian McCaffrey will be able to take advantage of. I don't know. Well, the thing with him is that he catches the ball a lot. So does Eckler. So does Eckler, but McCaffrey's just more, I don't, more elusive and more quick than Eckler. Yeah, Eckler's a little bit more on the bulky side, which is also great, actually. Um, but yeah, he's he's very elusive, uh, McCaffrey. Um, I I wanted another one that I think would be a good one to question you about is why didn't you put Joe Mixon in the? Top yeah, team? I wanted to mention Joe he's Mixon. At <laughs> The problem with Joe Mixon is, first of all, I have bad memories of him because I kept pe- picking him and he wouldn't produce for me. Well, last year he did produce and it was under Joe Burrow. That was Burrow. his best year. That was his best year. So they're going to continue having Joe Burrow. But I believe that that offense is going to continue having Joe Burrow as a passer more than in the running game. So it's not going to be like consistent with his with his touches. And since I've seen him already for so many years, just based on experience, I would just take the the all those players that I told you from one through 10 before I get Mixon. I wouldn't be comfortable at all getting him in the one through 10, but it could be PTSD for me. I don't know. <laughs> did you put Devontae Adams in your top 10? No, I did not because he moved from Why? Uh, from Aaron Rodgers to Derrick Henry. I mean, to Derek Carr and Carr. I know that they were both teammates in college, but he still has Waller there. He still has Renfro. So it's, mm-hmm. he's not Aaron Rodgers that is going to put the ball where he needs to ball all the time. So, of course, he he went from a big time quarterback to a lesser quarterback. So I would still be nervous. Again, for me, it's about risk. I am reducing my risk by getting Devontae Adams in the second round compared to in the first round with Justin Jefferson, Cooper Cup, or Stefan Diggs or Jamar Chase that already what, have their the quarterbacks difference? and they're already established. Big mistake. What's what's the difference between uh Cincinnati situation and the Las Vegas Raiders situation? Wouldn't you say they're pretty similar in their case? They all got really good weapons. Uh, yes and no. Uh, Joe Burrow has already proved it that he can go to the Super Bowl, and Derek Carr hasn't. So, but what? we're talking about fantasy here. Yeah. No, right. And fantasy. So, okay. What I'm trying to say is that Joe Burrow just found that connection already that we're seeing in the NFL between Jamar Chase and Burrow, even but- though they were translated from college to here. But it's been so. It's been a while now that that Devontae Adams and Derek Carr have been together in a team yeah it could be that Devonte adams just gets the same amount of points but again because of the risk situation and i don't know i feel more comfortable picking somebody that i do know that's already shown it with their current quarterback mm-hmm. fair enough i would say probably those are interchangeable as well because they got similar situations but yeah you, you'd rather go with someone who's already kind of proved themselves in the same scenario that they're going to be in this season than the other team who has it exactly exactly it's a new it's a new offense a new scheme and uh, you know um what's uh the quarterback i mean the coach the head coach josh mcdaniels run he, heavy he's a run heavy type of uh yeah offensive minded coach so josh jacobs is also a big question mark there you're gonna they're gonna be using other running backs as well and the he Devonte adams is gonna get his touches because he is Devontae Adams, but probably not as much as he did with Green Bay with Aaron Rodgers. But again, this is all speculation, right? <laughs> I think he'll be okay. He'll be okay, but not as how as he was before, in my opinion. Well, he wasn't like number one 
wide receiver? No, he wasn't. But would you consider him a top ten? I would if yeah. he was if he was back in Green Bay, I would have put him in my top ten. For sure. I know, I know. I had to see who's who's gonna ball out. Um I feel like they're I feel like either Chase or Jefferson. I'm between those two. They're gonna really ball out this this season, and they're gonna be the they're gonna take the number one that Cooper Cup was last year. I don't. I just feel like it's gonna be one of those two, Chase or Jefferson, or it could be a sleeper. It could be a sleeper. You know, Chase was the sleeper last year, and now he's top ten. Yeah, it can be that Burke mm-hmm. receiver that you said. I don't think times. it's. It, I don't think it's going to be him. Maybe in an, a year or two, because I don't. There's a question at the quarterback. It could be. Well, AJ Brown was really good under with, with him with uh, Tannehill. So, but it, it could happen. Yeah, but Tannehill's kind of on a decline for some reason. Like his <laughs> confidence is low. But let me let me say it could be Sky Moore from from Kansas City. Um, I believe Hardman was injured. It could be Sky Moore. He's the rookie that the wide receiver that got drafted. So it could be them. And then there's Patrick Mahomes who's a good quarterback. Yeah. So I'm giving you guys a little bit of secrets here. I'm eyeing him. <laughs> Burks is one that I'm I'm looking into. Uh I mean I'm sure this is an obvious one. Garrett Wilson from the Jets. Yeah, I wouldn't get him. Okay, don't get him. Yeah. Um <laughs> I mean get him. Why not? No, 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 thank you. <laughs> There's just been too much hype with, with the Jets and what I've seen so far. No, they're, Zach to- they're a disaster. They're, let's just not talk. No, let's yeah. move on. Move on. Let's move on. Um, <laughs> I, mean, I liked what I saw from Elijah Moore, if that helps your case. Elijah Moore did, yeah. I would be, feel more comfortable getting Elijah Moore then. Yeah, but he's like a late, late round pick, dude. Yeah. Like, I don't, I don't think, I think the safest pick is probably Brees Hall, and that's like a very late second round pick i wouldn't even get him in the second round Brees hall he won't la- he won't be in the third round nah, um yeah probably I, not somebody. he'll be he'll be third round he'll be third round but someone might take that risk of going late second round there's a wide receiver in saints um chris olav yeah uh, he i'm hearing whispers about him so those are the wide receivers that could make it to next year's be projected mm-hmm. to be top 10 mm-hmm so I'm thinking Sky Moore because of Patrick Mahomes. I don't know. What, why These not Juju wrists. Smith-Schuster? Oh, yeah. That guy, he could be another one. What about the Lazard? I mean, uh, he's to, a sleeper, I think. Today, Aaron Rodgers came out being super frustrated, calling out all his wide receivers because they're not running the correct routes or they're dropping the ball, which I completely disagree Something about Aaron Rodgers is that he's just like really great talent, but his personality, like, don't say those things. Just make make it like don't put it out in the media. That's what people are gonna know about you. That just brings you down negatively as a person uh, and your personality. Keep that in house. Have a meeting with your wide receivers and and talk about this stuff. Don't don't put them under the bus with the media. Maybe it's a way to light a fire up their butts. I don't think these wide receivers would take too kindly for that because he's has done it before it's not his first time uh jennings was one of his wide receivers from years and years ago and he would throw him under the bus even though greg jennings says that he's one of the great quarterbacks but he really disliked when he did things like that it didn't build a good relationship between them but alan lazard could be one no yeah i it could be possible um I don't know. I I like what I'm probably going to see with AJ Brown though. I think that um what's his name? Uh, I don't think I like it. Yeah, me neither. No, you you don't like it really? I think he's he's the clear number 1 there mm. and with um hi Jalen Hurts. You wouldn't say he's a clear number 1? Yeah, Jalen Hurts. Yeah, he is number man, 1. Couldn't... It's just the, the productivity. I just don't see it because of the Eagles. They have They've shown struggles with their running backs, so they're gonna be using it's, a lot they, of running backs. They're gonna be using. They have a running back committee, so the yeah, the running backs aren't gonna be safe. Right, right, and they like using their tight ends. And Jalen Hurst, it's still a question mark of how because he's gonna be running the ball. Like, if you want a good quarterback to, for fantasy, I would look into yeah, Jalen yeah, Hurts. Yeah. But I would, I, I I think AJ Brown is being picked really high than he should be. But that's just me. So I think one uh, multiple points I think I would point out there is that it's interesting that you didn't put Devontae Adams in the top 10, Joe Mixon in the top 10. How about Barkley? And 
No, been injured so many times <laughs> and in that horrible offense. But why does why yeah. doesn't he get yeah, no, a, a no. chance to shine? And why does McCaffrey do? Does because Barkley is now with the Panthers, so that's already and he's with the Giants, so it's it's already a big downside. Yeah, but you Christian have, McCaffrey has shown honest. that he shows more productivity than than Barkley. Okay, he gets me, so many more points than Barkley. Cool. Let me just bring a point here. When he was really good at his best, who was the head coach? Ron Rivera with Cam Newton. Were you talking with Christian McCaffrey? Mm-hmm, Christian McCaffrey. And ever since Matt Rule came in town, that team hasn't really been good. Now, now think of the upside with the Giants. Now they have Brian Dable, Dable as the head coach who was at the Buffalo with Josh Allen. So I, I'm going to see some positivity from this guy too. So I have him I have him on my radar too. I don't know what, where or when I would draft him. I just don't think it would be... It's kind of the same risk I'm willing to take with Christian McCaffrey. But if I can get him at the second round, I think that's a steal. I think another point that kind of sucks here is Nick Chubb just losing that hype and, and dropping down the list here. Yeah. Um, it, it, like he, he had, when he was at his peak, it was great. And, and now what are we going to see once, once, you know, what's his name? Uh, Kareem Hunt leaves. How is that going to go? And that's something I think to keep an eye on. He might be, I wouldn't say a steal, but like Nick Chubb might have a great season. He might not. It's like a gamble here, but uh, yeah, I, I think, I don't know. He, would you guys call him like a late second round pick? You know what? I just feel like I want to stay away from the Browns players as much as possible. Really? Even though he's like he's been kind of the only good part from that team. <laughs> they I would just get have him. a lot of mess going on, and they didn't look good at all in the preseason. And I'm a firm believer that whatever you see in the preseason is trickles down to the yes, it becomes a problem in the end of in your in yeah. the season. Like I saw the Jets having a, the same defense I saw in 2021. It's going to be the same old story in the Jets. Same with the Cowboys. 100 penalties, they're going to see 50 penalties. It's (laughs) going to be a problem. It's a preseason. It's a preview preview of what's to come. I see what you said there. (laughs) If you have a smart head coach, then you might have a chance that you won't see those again. But most of the coaches in the NFL are not smart because there's only like two of them. Kyle Shanahan and Bill Belichick, in my opinion. I no, can't think of anyone Sean else. McVay. Oh, Sean McVay. Oh, three. Right. Anyways. Cut me off. No. <laughs> Move on. <laughs> um, yeah, no. I, I mean, you know, I don't disagree with that. Um, but I think that would just go into something else. Um, no, but yeah. it, you're, like you're saying, Chubb, he could actually, like you're saying, if Hunt leaves... Um, which I don't think he's going to leave this season, but maybe he does. And maybe no. he... He wants out, though. It's already confirmed, but he probably won't leave this season. But I believe they also have another running back besides besides Chubb and yeah, Hunt. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. It's also a question yeah. mark. But yeah, I, I would pick him like maybe in the very end of the second round or early third round. Mm-hmm. He's a low-end running back one is what they're calling yeah. him, which I think is fair enough to say. Um, but he he's capable of being more than that. Um, but this Elliot team first. is kind of dysfunctional. Mm-mm. Oh, interesting. Okay. <laughs> I think they're pretty inter- interchangeable as yeah, well. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah. Whoever's available, I guess would that that would be the best option. But if if they were both up, I don't think you could go wrong really with either one of them, in my opinion. Yeah. Um. Yeah. That's all I have to say for that. And so I'm excited to just get get it going because we haven't done our fantasy yet. But once we get that going, it's gonna be fun. Yeah, um, big tip. And then is to for fantasy for your mock draft. A big tip is to always do your fantasies in the weekend of Labor Day or and like that little few days before the first yep. game, because that's when you know that you all yeah injuries. all those injuries are gone and you're ready to go fresh. Yep, I agree with that. And then I hope to see more from Kenny Pickett this preseason. He's shown some good flashes, and I think they're in good hands and possibly have their future franchise quarterback. But, you know, it's still too early to tell. Lamar Jackson, pretty risky what he's doing this season. Negotiating his contract is not going to be a thing. 
Um, so we'll see how that one works out as well. But yeah, that's going to conclude this episode of Football Tailgaters. We appreciate anyone that's made it to the end, and we hope to see you guys interacting with us on our social media, which is Football Tailgaters on YouTube, TikTok, Instagram. Thank you guys again for listening, and we'll see you guys on the next episode. Thank you. Bye.